Hello and welcome back to another video guys, or should I say welcome back to another premiere because that's what I'm going to be doing with this one, another premiere. Um, so yes, hello, welcome back. Um, this is the last video I have to do for the end of 2020, part of my kind of normal ritual end of the year videos. Um, we've done all the movies, we've done them all. Top 10 movies, top 10 worst movies. We've ranked every single movie I saw in 2020. Now we're going to do TV series. Now I've got 21 shows here, so there's no point doing top 10 best, top 10 worst, because it's more or less just splitting the videos down the middle, just leaving out number 11. Um, so we're just going to rank them all. So we're going to go from my worst TV show all the way through to my best. Now remember guys, this is just my opinion, of course. <laughs> um, but as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Coming in in last place, the worst TV show I saw this year without a doubt is... The spin-off show to The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead well beyond. And this show was absolutely beyond terrible. It was um it was it was a failure in every aspect. Every episode was dull, boring, there felt like there was zero threats, there was barely any zombies in the zombie apocalypse. There was I don't think there was a single human villain for the most part. All the characters were like planks of wood, this coming of age story of with kids in a zombie apocalypse was just a terrible idea from the word go. The dialogue was unbelievably terrible. The acting was awful. Um, the score, the music, there was it was just useless and boring and dull. The editing was incredibly bad. There was a and the sound mixing as well. There was a scene at the in one of the first episodes where Kurt's got under a car. And the music was playing loud and a zombie sort of rolled under the car with her. And instead of like slowly turning the music, well not slowly, but you know, turning the music down, they just literally just dropped the music. And then when the zombie was going to just bring it straight back up, the sound mixing was terrible. This whole show was terrible. Um, the last episode was the only one that I found would walk away and say, well, that was okay. But the first nine episodes were honestly all Awful. This was a terrible show. Um, I'm not sure if season two is going to happen. I don't know. I mean, they've said it's only going to be a two season long show anyway. So who knows? But we can get well beyond gets last place. This show was bloody awful. Um, but coming in next place is Doctor Who. Now, yep, yeah, that's right. Do you remember Doctor Who series 12 actually come out this year? Or 2020? Yeah. Yeah, that was a 2020 release. Um, not going to include the New Year's Day special because that was New Year's Day. Um, but series 13 apparently is coming out in 2021, so you'll get to hear me talk about New Year's Day and obviously more Doctor Who at the end of 21. Um, but anyway, um, Doctor Who series 12, yeah, what another bloody mess. I mean, until the last episode, it was going okay. Maybe okay is too kind. But there were like three episodes I liked out of the first nine. I was like, you know what, it's better than last season somehow. Um... It wasn't much better, but it was a smidge better. And it was a smidge up this list, to be fair. It wasn't quite at this low down. But then the last episode happened, The Timeless Child. <sighs> Where they decide to rewrite all the Doctor Who history, which is something uh, which was just beyond terrible, wasn't it now? It was awful. Um, the show continues to give terrible, terrible scripts. Um, the acting is just not good in this show. Uh, the score, it pains me that they've gone from someone like Murray Gold and they haven't tried to replace him with someone good. They've just gone with this awful, awful composer. And I say awful, maybe he's good in other stuff. Maybe he is. I don't know what other stuff he's done, but in Doctor Who, he doesn't fit at all. He's terrible. Um, Chris Chipnell, we don't like you. Go. We don't, we, we don't want you. Get out of here. But anyway, we've only got one more season with Jodie. So, the end of 21. Let's see how season 13 pans out. Um, next up is Space Force. This was maybe the most disappointing show of the year for me. I love the US office and I love Parks and Recreation. So when I found out that the creators of those shows were doing a Netflix comedy show with Steve Carell finally returning to work with them. And it was going to be on a comedy show based off some stupid stuff that Donald Trump had talked about. I was like, this has potential to be amazing. And I don't think I laughed once. John Malkovich is the only one who had a couple scenes which I found funny. I love Steve Carell. I love him. Everything he'd done in The Office, every line he delivered cracked me up. But in this, his character wasn't very funny. All the side characters were dull and boring. Um, yeah, Space Force was a bit of a disappointment. 
Next up is the is an animated show, which I don't normally watch these things. I'm not big on like Rick and Morty, Family Guy, Simpsons. I'm not into that stuff. But I watched this one because it's based off DC, the Harley Quinn show. Um, and yeah, you know what? It's fine. I like the fact that it was sort of taking the piss out of these DC characters more than anything. Um, Clayman and King Shark were funny in it. I like the fact that they had some balls on them to do the romance stuff with Harley Quinn and um, Poison Ivy, which, you know, I'm not sure the films will ever have the balls to do because the DC films are just a mess at the minute anyway. I don't think they'll ever get there at this point. <laughs> so, yeah, and it was nice just to see some other um, DC villains pop up, even though the Joker plays a big part in season one. It's nice just to sort of get away from the Joker and see some other villains do some stuff as well. Um, so, yeah, Harley Quinn. Next up is The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Now, this is interesting because at the start of 2020, we got season three. And then right at the very end of 2020, we got season four. So there's two seasons here. Season four, of course, was cut down um, from 10 episodes to eight because it was the last season. And, you know, they got told, I believe, half while, as they were starting to feel that it would be their last season. So I think they had to write in... Um, they had to mess about with the season four scripts a bit, I'm guessing, to make it end as well as they thought we did. Even though I've, I've, I've noticed there's been a lot of controversy about the ending of Sabrina. I've noticed a lot of people hate it. To be honest, I liked the first two seasons of Sabrina, but I didn't enjoy season three. It got a bit too gimmicky for me. The scripts got a lot worse. I didn't like the fact that there was so many, so much singing in it, weirdly. And there was a cheerleading scene in the first one. I was like, this is just really pulling me out. It doesn't feel like a realistic witch show anymore. It now feels like a teenage girly show. Um, so I, I, I sort of gave up caring about Sabrina. I only watched season... I think I would have given up after season three, to be honest. But I just sat through season four because I knew it was the last season. I was like, right, well, I might as well finish it now. I'm so close to the end. Um, so I think I just sort of stopped caring about Sabrina, which is why the ending didn't offend me too much. Um, yeah, the, the the show's okay. There's some cringy acting and some diabolical um, scripts here, but it's fun. I yeah, it's fun. It's it's yeah. That's that's about the best I can do for it. It's it's fine. It's you know I I didn't get too offended by the ending. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was just yep, it exists. Next up is the main Walking Dead show. I haven't watched Fear the Walking Dead from this year, season six, so you won't see that on this list yet. Um, I will watch Fear the Walking Dead at some point. But um, the main Walking Dead show, yeah. Um, the <clears throat> quote-unquote season finale to season 10, I thought, was so underwhelming. But then, of course, because of COVID, they're now adding on the six episodes they've been able to film this year to season 10, so it's not the finale anymore. But it would have been the finale. I found that very underwhelming. But other than that, um, there was some good stuff this season. Um, I loved the stuff. With, I loved Michonne's last episode. I thought that was great, actually. That that was the great episode this year. Walking Dead always does that. Every season, other than season eight, because that sucked. Um, every season, they always seem to pull out one really good episode. Still. And Michonne's last one was fantastic. Um, the, the, the show kept me entertained. It, you know, it's at that level still where it's like, yep. Yeah, it's nothing to go shouting about. Yeah, it's never... I don't think it's ever going to regain the quality that it used to be. I mean, of course, it's ending soon anyway. So I, it hasn't got much long left to do that. But, yeah, it's... It, it, it kept me engrossed. Yeah. Next up is I'm Not Okay With This, um, which just felt like... The creators of this show saw it and went, right, get the girl from it and get the kid from it. And the kid from it, the, the, the guy, his character's name is even the same as his character's name in it. Just, I mean, tried to make it spooky, gory, like it. Had the same kind of lighting effects. It's like, I, I'm guessing, because it's a Netflix original, they just saw it and went, let's make that a TV series. But it had a really cool concept. This girl... Had these weird powers and she was sort of just discovering them for the first time at school. Cool concept. I like it. It's just that it just they didn't run with it very well. And I, I say it just felt like an it ripoff. But yeah, I'm not surprised this show got cancelled. But 
hey ho, is what it is. Next up is Truth Seekers. This is um, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost starring in something together. Um, I mean, they've done a couple little odds and odds and sods here and there since the Cornetto trilogy. But this is like the first time they've properly done it. Or I thought they properly done it, but then it turns out Simon Pegg's belly in this. Um, th this show was okay as well. I There were some episodes I really liked. There were some episodes I was really bored. It was a very hit and miss show. Um, it just went up and down like this, where... Or just episodes I, I really had a good time with, and then there were ones I didn't. Um, my favourite ones would be... There was one where they went to a convention. That was fun. And the finale, probably. Um, Nick Frost was great in this. And whenever Simon Pegg was on screen, he was great as well. Um, next up, I'm not sure, I wasn't sure whether to include this in the next one, because they're not like dramas or they're not acted. Um, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to include them because I feel like they deserve some recognition. Um, the World According to Jeff Goldblum. This was one of the first things I watched on Disney Plus when I got it, because when I got Disney Plus, the only original things here in the UK on it were World According to Jeff Goldblum. And the Mandalorian in terms of like big things, big original things. And I'd already watched the Mandalorian, so I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Disney. I was not going to wait five, four, four, five months to watch it because America had already had it. No, I streamed that. I'm, I'm not even going to deny that. Um, but I, you know, I have rewatched it on there since, you know, and I'm paying for Disney Plus, so don't get too upset at me, people. Um, but I thought, you know, I'm paying for Disney Plus. I want to watch something new and original to it. And I watched World According to Jeff Goldblum. And I found the show fascinating at times. There were some incredible episodes. Jeff Goldblum himself, he's so charismatic. I love watching him. Uh, my favourite episode here was definitely the one about swimming pools. But I also like the one about jeans. Very entertaining. Next up, if people remember this during the first lockdown um, here in the UK, this was like a huge, huge show that everyone was talking about. Um, Tiger King. Yeah, this. how much of this was real? I don't know. I think a lot of it probably was. I don't know. I, I just sort of watched it because everyone was talking about it and had a really good time with it. It's hard to believe that people like this actually exist in the world. It's crazy. But I, I just found this fascinating. And honestly, I kept thinking at the end of every episode, he can't do more weird shit. And then he would. It's like, he, this can't get worse. And then it does. And then by the last episode, you're just like, my... God, that was mental. So yeah, um, the Tiger King, very entertaining. Next up is Killing Eve. So this is the third season of Killing Eve. Um, I think it's the weakest season. I, I, I it, the show seems to just be stretching a bit now. Like I don't like it when shows push this romance thing, but there's someone else in the way, and then it's back and forth. It's like, well, they won't they. Like, you know, loads of shows do it, especially comedy shows, you know, I know that Friends does it a lot, used to do it a lot with their characters, and like, even in The Office, you have Jim and Pam, who are going back and forth for like, it goes back and forth till the end of season three, end of season three, they finally get together, here, Eve and, uh, what's her name, Villanelle, or something like that, they, they, you know, you finally think they're going to get together at the end of it, and you're like, okay, finally, let's, let's let this happen, and then it doesn't, and it's like, my God, I don't want to do a whole nother season of this. I'm I'm over it now. <laughs> um, so it's a bit frustrating, but at the same time, there's there's still a lot of good show in it, stuff in this show. Uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge does an incredible job writing this show. Um, the drama is great. It's very well filmed. It looks great. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff in here. I think as a fan who's been watching this for a while, it's, I don't know, it, it's just getting to the point now where it's, Feels like I want the show to progress a bit more. Uh, next place is Afterlife. Ricky Gervais's show on Netflix. It's not like his normal shows. It's not one of his laugh out loud comedies. This is um, a lot more serious. A lot more depressing. It's about a man who wants to kill himself because he's lost his wife. And he's surrounded by... Not all of them are miserable, but some other miserable characters. And to be honest, I found the first three episodes of this a bit hard to get through. Because even though I'm someone who can relate, I've lost people in my life. You know, most people have. I find the first e the first three episodes, I found them really hard to get through. Because it was just straight up depressing. Um, had great dialogue. It had great messages. Um, very well acted. But it was it was just so depressing to the core. 
Um, but then the, the back three episodes, stuff starts to happen. The, the, the continuity of the show and the narrative starts to come in a bit more. And I think I found it a lot more interesting. And I did overall really like the show. But it's a struggle, this one. I think the third and final season is coming out this year. Um, which I'm really happy for. I do really like this show overall. But I, I don't think I could take much more of this show. Because it is such a heavy hitter. Um, so now I believe we're in the top ten. Let's have a look. Three, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh no, Afterlife was number ten. Afterlife's number. We're in the top ten. <laughs> Coming in next place, then number nine is Star Wars: The Clone Wars, season seven, the final season. They came back and finished it. Now this might seem really low to some of you, and let me explain. The last four episodes of this are the best TV I've watched this year. Uh, I know they won't be for most people, but for me, huge Star Wars fan, and my favourite time during Star Wars is the Clone Wars. And my favourite period in the Clone Wars is right at the end when things are ending, when the Jedi Purge happens. It's my favourite period in Star Wars. I love it. Um, I love seeing the, the universe change so much. You know, the, the Republic becomes the Empire, and the Separatists and the Jedi are wiped out. I love that era of Star Wars. And I've always wondered what happened to Ahsoka and Maul. Because the Ahsoka novel only told us so much. The last four episodes here were absolutely incredible. They were all honest to God, 10 out of 10s. I love them. Best TV I watched this year. Best thing Disney have done with Star Wars since they bought it. And that is including The Mandalorian. I think the last four episodes here are the best thing Disney have done with Star Wars. I loved it. However, the eight episodes that come before were all just good. I didn't, I didn't dislike any of them. I know some people had a problem with that middle story arc. I thought it was fine. Um, they just didn't blow me away. And that's the reason that it sort of pulled this season as a whole down a bit. Um, in the ranking, um, the Bad Batch episodes were good. I'm really looking forward to the Bad Batch show next year. You know, that was all set up. The middle story arc was just average. Um, but as I say, the last story arc is what has brought this the Clone Wars this high on the ranking. Because the last story arc was fantastic. Uh, coming in next place is Umbrella Academy Season 2. Guys, what an improvement. I mean, I, I liked the first season of the Umbrella Academy. I thought it was good, but I didn't think it was great. This improved so much. I love going back to the 60s. It's much more interesting. The music in this was fantastic. I love the set pieces, the costumes. Um, the Axel did a great job. The story was so good this season. So good. Um... I, I can't gush about this season enough. Uh, from here on out, we're in consistently really good TV shows, I want to say. Um, Umbrella Academy was fantastic. And so excited to see where they go in the future with this show. So excited. Um, next place. Uh, the last thing I watched for this ranking. His Dark Materials. Season 2. Um, now, yeah, I I actually think I preferred Season 1 slightly. Um, this, episode, this season was shortened by one episode because of COVID. Um, but I loved the last episode so much. And I did enjoy this show overall. I really liked the dynamic between um, two lead characters. Their relationship was really well developed. And yeah, I overall had a fantastic time on the show. It looks incredible. This might be, and we're going to say this, this might be, yeah, this might be the best looking show of the year. Um, the animals in it look insanely good. I mean, he wasn't on screen as much this season, but the polar bear looked incredible. Um, and all of the eagles and the birds and stuff look fantastic. I, I, I couldn't believe what I was watching sometimes. It looks incredible, this show. Next up is Sex Education, season two. This, I don't, I don't know if this show has any right to be as good as what it is, but it's absolutely incredible. Both seasons are sex ed. I'm not sure what season I prefer. They're both kind of on the same level for me, where I'm just in awe of this show. It's all so bloody good. It's... In terms of character development, I'm not sure there's any character development happening as good as this on TV at the moment. It's fantastic. You feel for these characters so much. The, it's the best coming of age story I've seen put onto TV, without a doubt. The actors are all doing a fantastic job. I love the music in this, the look of this show as well, the aesthetic. It's incredible. This show is absolutely fantastic. If you haven't seen Sex Education, it's on Netflix. It's a huge recommendation. Uh, next up, so here we go. This is um, top five. Top five. Here we go. What We Do in the Shadows, number five, season two. Um, I love What We Do in the Shadows. I love the um, 
So of course, first off, I saw the Taika Waititi film. I loved it. When I found out there was a TV show, I was like, right, I'm going to go watch that. And I had such a good time with the first season. I was a bit nervous to see season two. I really didn't want them to lose their way. But you know what? I had an absolutely incredible time with it again. I love these characters so much. They're so quirky and fun and weird. I, I, I absolutely loved spending time with these characters again. This was one of the first things I watched in 2020, so I can't really remember specific episodes, but this show is it makes me laugh out loud. It's my type of humour. It's perfect for my sense of humour. Um, fantastic show. Coming in in third place is just... Wow. I, I you know, I'm... I, <laughs> I'm gushing over these shows now because these shows here really blew, blew me away. Um, the third season of Westworld. Whew. Westworld, the TV show, it's taking a cheesy older movie, which I haven't seen in years. I saw it when I was younger and I liked it, but it never really blew me away. It's taking that and I know it's based off books as well. And it's running with it at 100 miles per hour and it's making the best high quality show you can see on tv today the writing is unbelievably incredible it is very confusing if you if you tune out for 10 minutes you're going to lose your way and i think that's one of the reasons a lot of people don't like it because it's it's just very complex you can tell that christopher nolan's brother is making this show um but it's it's so good in terms of like plot development and character development. And this show will throw you around like a ragdoll till you're confused as hell. However, it does it in a really good, clever way. Unlike Tenant that does it for the sake of it. This does it to, to, to actually progress the plot and the characters. And the acting in this is fantastic. The dialogue is great. The look as well. I'm going to take back what I said about His Dark Materials. Even though that show looks incredible. This is the best looking show. Season 3 looks stunning. I loved it so much. Season 3 of Westworld was incredible. Uh, but coming in in third place is the second season of The Boys. Now, this is the most fun I think I've had this year with a TV show. It was so bloody good, wasn't it? I mean, every episode ended and you were like, I just want to know more. <laughs> uh, it was really fun to see some of these characters um, develop. Because some of them were just going down these really dark rabbit holes and you're like oh my god you're messed up <laughs> um yeah it was fantastic to watch uh the, this show looks like a big budget superhero movie at times which is fantastic and it's it's kind of what i want the dcu to do see these some of these heroes go a bit darker and they just don't have the balls to do it in the minute maybe zack snyder's justice league have changed that um, with Dark Superman, but at the minute it's, you know, The Boys is doing everything that I want DC to do, but just a lot better. Um, Homelander's great. I love all the characters in this show. Really, really good show. Uh, but coming in in second place is The Queen's Gambit. Yeah, I'm not sure... I'm not sure how this show's as good as it is. I didn't think a show about a chess player would be too interesting. I like chess. I've always been a big fan of not only playing it, um, but, you know, sometimes watching the tournaments and stuff. I used to watch them with my granddad when I was younger because we used to love chess. Um, we used to watch a couple of tournaments and sometimes they would get a bit interesting. So I, I used to be like a good 10 years ago, a little bit of a little bit of a chess nerd. So I kind of was interested to watch this show, but I didn't think it'd be great. Wow, this show was fantastic. Every episode, I just wanted to carry on, carry on. All of the acting in it was amazing, especially from Anya Taylor-Joy. She's knocked it out of the park this year. I mean, she's had some great, great projects out this year. Um, and yeah, every, every, this story just kept developing, kept going. You were rooting for her the whole way. I, I'm not sure how they made this show this interesting, but they did. And it was really great to watch. Really, really fun, fun show. Coming in at number one. How can I not do it? The Mandalorian Season 2. Um, the Mandalorian didn't make my number one spot last year. So I don't think I'm in too overly Star Wars biased. Um, I think in terms of consistency and narrative, there are other shows that come out this year that have done it better. Um, you know, the, the consistency and narrative doesn't link up the first three, four episodes perfectly. And that's about the only issue I've got with this season. 
as a Star Wars fan, this season was so rewarding to get Clone Wars characters finally get brought to the um, live action, like Bo-Katan, Ahsoka Tano, um, to get name drops from other characters like Thrawn, Yoda, which we all just really, really want to see more of. Um, and then, you know, it, the show itself just felt so rewarding. You know, that the final scene in the final episode was amazing. Um, you know, the, all the stuff with Boba Fett was incredible. Uh, you know, as a huge Star Wars fan, this felt so rewarding. It was so well made. Um, it was it was an improvement on season one. Not sure how, because I really enjoyed season one, but they improved it. This show was great. It really was. Mandalorian season two knocked it out the park. Not sure how they're going to top it with season three, but I don't. It doesn't look like we'll be talking about a season three of Mandalorian next year. That looks like early twenty twenty two. But next year we have um, the Bad Batch and the Book of Boba Fett um, definitely happening. Um, so we'll have those to talk about. I, there might be another Star Wars show next year as well. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but anyway, that is my ranking of all the TV shows that I've seen throughout the year of 2020. I hope you've enjoyed it as always, guys. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave a message, and I'll see you guys next time for another video. Bye-bye.